Hi guys, welcome to our YouTube channel. This is Astrid and OJ, and today I, it's only OJ. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning here in Mauritius, Africa. And I thought maybe today I should share something that has been on my mind. But first of all, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really love you guys. Thank you for the returning subscribers. Thank you for people who like and always comment on our videos. That really means a lot to us. Continue subscribing, continue liking this video. So, today's episode, it's very special and this is for me. I thought maybe I should open up my heart and share something that has been really disturbing me for the past couple of months since I've been in Mauritius. And this is a challenge to any person who is, um, who is in abroad in any country in this world that is not your home country. So I have a very big struggle in terms of uh, looking for employment. I think wherever you are in your country and, and you hear someone is in the US, you know, someone in Europe, or whatever, uh, as long as it's not your home, you the first thing that comes to your mind is that these people are living luxury another thing is that these people are being paid a lot of money and also there's something that we've also been lied to that it is easy to get a job in in, in abroad countries i don't know whatever you are in in this world but it is not the same case for me what is this by the way it is not the same case for me um since I moved to Mauritius, uh, first of all, I came through. Uh, I came to visit, and then later on, I came into a marriage visa. And then we got married. So doing all these things, the intention was not for me to live and work in Mauritius. We just loved each other, and we decided that we we want to get married at this season. Uh, and things escalated very quickly, and we felt like it is okay for us to take this chance to just civilly get married even though we will still we are gonna get married um in kenya uh we decided we're gonna do our civil wedding in mauritius and then our big wedding we're gonna do it in kenya which is very beautiful that is coming soon but it has been very tricky for me to be able to just get something that is called a work visa it is not easy um number one thing i don't i also think like it depends with your profession uh, personally for me i'm a chef and, and I'm not saying that as a chef it is difficult for me to get a job. There are so many jobs, but the problem is the process for you to get that job. There is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of paperwork that goes on, on it. And also the employer needs to give the immigration a reason why he is employing you rather than them taking their local person in the country. So they there's always this um, information that the employer really needs to convince the immigration that I am taking Jay because Jay coming from Kenya he has one two three four that the Mauritian does not have this so this is a challenge especially in my career I know probably to other careers it's different maybe if you're an accountant maybe if you are someone doing marketing and maybe you're doing advertisements Maybe you're a lawyer, maybe you're a doctor. It, it, it is also different criteria in terms of how you are applying for these documents. So, this is the number one frustration. Since I am married to Astrid, uh, theoretically, I am meant to become a resident. Immediately I get married to Astrid, I'm allowed to stay. You know, uh, so staying is not a problem. I'm staying here, whatever, I'm going to stay here for 10, 50 whatever years and maybe by that my status will change uh, by staying longer you know like in so many countries maybe you have to live for eight years or ten years for you to become a citizen depending on where you are even if it's in Europe there, there are those laws that have been put that you have to meet them for you to be able to permanently become a resident so at the moment I'm, I'm temporary for maybe the, the next two years I'm gonna be a resident for two years and then from there they can be able to extend my visa more but the issue is even for you to get that residence you need to be very disciplined in terms of waiting especially as a man oh my god it is so much frustrating i'm not saying it's a bad process but it's so much frustrating that you really need to be patient you just need to find something to do for yourself because it is 
it is you have a lot of time by yourself you know be, I'm, I'm becoming a bit hot i don't know why but uh let me just put this this is on me i'm becoming very hot huh? this conversation is is melting me anyway Anyway, guys, what I was just trying to say is that I have been really struggling, especially uh, mentally, uh, because uh, you really need to be patient. Um, you just have to wait and wait and wait and wait, which has... It is too much of stress uh, uh, for, for you, because you have to, first of all, get the residence permit. After getting the residence permit, that also does not allow you to work. So after getting the residence permit, you now are allowed to go and look for a job. And then the employer can be able to sponsor you the visa. And also by that, you don't know how long it's going to stay. For just waiting for the residence permit, it takes four months. Four months. And for you to get married, at least you need to stay at the country. Was it like... A 30 days before you get married or are we i've forgotten the, the the mathematics but i think it's like a month and a half for you to be able to also get married so there's a lot of things that going through uh in terms of just waiting and just being faithful that something is gonna open up uh you're gonna get something to do for yourself and i and i feel this conversation is very broad even for someone who's out in your let me speak of people who are in kenya maybe your dreams are you want to come and work abroad, I, I would just let you know that it is a very good idea, but it is not easy. Another thing also that we, I think that the, we people don't share a lot is, is, is the life difference. The life, oh my God, why am I speaking like this? So there's that life difference in terms of expenditure. There's, there's a lot to do with that. A lot of people make this mistake. Uh, if you're in Kenya and you look even at agents who uh, would want to would want to agents who work with bringing people abroad, most of the time what they do, and this is a very bad mistake these people do, is that they tell you you're gonna be paid a thousand euros per month. So you, what you do, you take that a thousand euros and you multiply it by Kenyan shillings. So you find maybe a euro. I don't know. I, I I don't know how much a euro is. Maybe it's a hundred and maybe it's a hundred and thirty, a hundred and forty, or maybe hundred and fifty Kenyan shillings. One euro. So you will take a thousand. You multiply that a hundred and fifty, and you see you're gonna have a hundred and fifty thousand Kenyan shillings. For getting that, this job that you're operating in, you're not working in Kenya. You are actually working in Europe. So for you to be paid in euro, you have to sustain the lifestyle in Europe. And the life in Europe is expensive. To get a house that is probably a thousand euros, a house, it's, it's, it's a very small house. Maybe you have to share with someone. A house probably it's going to cost you 500 euros. You need to have food. So the life you're going to live in, in Europe with the kind of salary you're having that is 150,000 Kenyan shillings, does not add up because your rent probably it's um, 80,000 Kenyan shillings your food is 50,000 shillings so whatever amount you will actually you are left with it's very 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 little and knowing that you're coming from an African family whereby the system has been put that we have to support our family which is great we have to support our our families the kind of amount of money that you're gonna send them and what you can decide to save it's it's very little it's very little but still i will say i will not compare that than being in kenya because number one just being in kenya alone there's a high chance that you're not gonna have even that job to pay you that a thousand uh, euros so this is one of the challenges that I've been going through. And I think in, in this season, I'll be sharing uh, this kind of episodes just to highlight uh, my personal experience in terms of um, trying to get a job um, in, in Europe. And also another thing that is also important is your documents. You just need to have the right documents because when you're coming to be employed as an expert or if you're a resident, they are very different. 
So if you're going abroad to work as an expert, there's a lot of documentation in terms of school. You need to have very, uh, like you need to have certain level of education for you to be able to to do that, etc. But all in all, um, personally for me, I've been struggling for this couple of months, and I felt why not? Let me just talk about it. You know, sometimes we have this um, YouTube channel just to speak these kind of things, and. I, and I felt maybe even for me sharing or be speaking to someone who is or probably going through the same thing, you know, like you're going through a difficult time where you're also abroad and you're also just waiting for your papers to come through because it happens to a lot of people, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people are in this season whereby you just have to wait and, you know, like you just pray to God to give you that resilience, to be able to give you the strength, to be patient. And so that at this time, whenever it comes, you're going to get your job, you'll be able to to, to get along and to be to, to continue the plans. But all in all, I'm great, I'm healthy, um, but I just want you guys to put me in your prayers, you know, because sometimes it's very difficult when you're in a foreign country, you don't understand the language, you don't have actually friends. The people who you have are just family, you know. I'm not saying it's bad to you're not considering family as friends but you know i think you understand what i'm saying it's not as your food it's not your tribe it's not your it's not your common ways of living so you come into this society whereby things are different than what you're used to so also sometimes that becomes a challenge but i think in this season what i've actually learned personally is that uh you it is it is important to learn these skills i think sometimes god puts us in some situations to be able to test how patient can we be and also how can we trust him more you know because sometimes you really um, put a lot of strength on just believing in ourselves and forget the, that there's a power there's a force and there's also a spirit that is working out things so in this season I'm also reminded that I need to believe in God because Without all those kind of quality things, I think I would be, I would give up. I would, I, I would just tell Astrid, Yo, I feel like I should go back to Kenya and we do a little bit of distance, which is not worth it at the end of the day. It's not like if I go back to Kenya, I'm going to be in a better situation. It's, it's just worse, but it's just another different struggle than what I'm going. So at the end of the day, it's just a struggle, but in a different level. So I, at this season, I've just chose to be patient. I've chose to be I've chose to just listen to my body more. I've chose peace. Peace. And I've chose to to be able to just learn and, and understand. Like I can't I can't even actually believe that it's me who's this patient because I am someone who is always making moves, like thinking about oh this one is not working. I because when I was in Kenya, I used to do business and I, and, and I've closed so many times, I've moved so many times because maybe it was not a good location, it was not this and that, etc. But in this season, I think I have actually been reminded and I've been trained just by the things that are happening in my surrounding that it's capable for you to be a patient human being. Just to say that, I really pray for someone who's out there that is really struggling, being at the same place. I just want to let you know that you are not alone. You are not alone in this kind of situation. And I can tell you for sure, you're going to come out victoriously. You're going to come out um, being a greater person. Sometimes we even feel like the the, the plans, the future, the, the dreams that we have are being, we are not going to make it because maybe time is running. Maybe you wanted to be in a certain place at the same age, at the same moment, and things are just not going as you plan. But trust me, as long as you still have a dream, as long as you're still alive, we are not limited. Like Kipchoge, uh, Eliud Kipchoge, the Eliud Kipchoge says, the Marathon runner, no human is limited. I also believe in that. In terms of your success, you are not limited. In terms of your dreams, you are not limited. In terms of anything you want to achieve in this life, you are not limited. Trust and believe that if you get that one chance, you will make a difference 
in your life and in someone's life because that's what a lot of people that's our purpose in this world because we want to change our situations and we also want to change the situations around the, our surrounding either it's our parents either it's our siblings either it's our friends our community we just want to make a different impact to be able to touch someone's life and that's why we are here that's why people are chasing dreams you want to have an institution whereby you're going to employ 10 people you're going to employ 20 people you're going to be a job creator than a job seeker just by saying that guys this video has been for 15 minutes and you can see the way i'm sweating eh? the humid it's it's summer it's starting eh? and mauritius the humid is uh, up here and look at me i'm not a really good person in the in this season so i'm a bit sweaty but all in all guys all the best thank you so much for listening and thank you for loving this uh youtube channel i've put a a, a support a link there on our paypal if you feel you want to support our youtube channel you can definitely do that because we also have dreams to make it grow buy some nice equipment to be able to shoot our videos like be able to get maybe like a nice camera nice microphones so that we might be able to just explore in this channel you can always support us there uh, thank you so much until next time we meet again this is astrid and oj youtube channel bye bye boom